More VoIP and monitoring. We got Oleg here who's going to uh, tell us about SIP3. It is his first ever public presentation, so please give him some love and encouragement. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm going to tell you about yet another <laughs> voice over IP monitoring and troubleshooting system called SIP3. Uh, you might be heard about uh, Tapir. Tapir. Sorry? Louder? Oh. <clears throat> okay. You might be heard about Tapir. Tapir is the previous version of our system, and, but I'm pretty sure that for most of you it will be something new today. Now, let me introduce myself. Um, that's all you need to know. I'm Aga Fox everywhere in GitHub and in social media, uh, but a bit more. Uh, I have been designing and developing distributed systems, different distributed systems as developer and architect for more than 10 years, and last six I'm Mm, spending my time in telecom. Uh, telecom did lots of great stuff last couple of decades, but it's obvious that, you know, we need to uh, update and adopt telecom to modern technologies and to modern um, stacks just to make it uh, up to market. So that's what I'm trying to do all the time mm, in SIP3 as well and on my previous... Uh, on my previous places. So now let me start from a scary story. It's called Just 3261. Uh, there was a company. There was a company who built a great, uh, pretty good voice over IP provider service. And at some point they dis they just realized that they have something like 20,000 messages per second. And engineers who designed originally and who built all these systems, they spending most of their time just, you know, trying to help with uh, customer support tickets. Because <coughs> customer support tickets is a simple thing. Like I, I, had, uh, I tried to call from A number to B number and I had no success. What was the problem? And it, this call was, when, it, when was this call? This call was mm, something like three hours ago. But when exactly? I don't know, maybe... 15, 20 minutes difference. Just imagine now that 20,000 SIP messages per second and 20 minutes, it's a good amount of data. So this company, they uh, store TCP dumps and they rotate it by uh, time and by size. Uh, and then uh, they try to find and correlate SIP session on every, I mean, all correlated to this, all related to this uh, call information from these TCP dumps. So it was insane. Uh, Another thing, this company, they didn't have much of budget, but they asked us to help. We decided to help, and the first thing we did, of course, because we are lazy engineers, uh, we tried to make a research, what do we have on market, what do we have on, in open source, of course. Uh, and let me recall, uh, they had a simple requirement, re release pool engineers and make support team responsible for troubleshooting. It's easy, right? Uh, just A number, B number, and time, that's it. Um, we did deep, deep, deep research. By deep research, I mean that we looked far than second page of Google, <laughs> than first, actually. And that's what we found so far. Uh, it was Oracle Palladian, it was Homer, <laughs> and it was VoIP Monitor. So it's three solutions. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have much budget to deploy any of these. And uh, we took Homer back then, it was Homer 5, and unfortunately, 20,000 SIP messages per second, uh, uh, they couldn't handle it in open source version. Because it was MySQL and it was, <laughs> it was two years ago. Uh, that's why the only one thing we could do is we created Monster. We created Tapir. Uh, and this monster did the job. So Tapir was able to deal with any amount of data without like any problems, but okay, it was restricted. It was uh, developed for a particular case, right? When you have like A number, B number, and date, that's it. Uh, so we made poor engineers happy. Yes, and they kept going and building new business logic and customer was happy as well. Uh, Tapir, was, Tapir is based on uh, lots of open source uh, frameworks and libraries and projects. 
uh, for capturing, for processing, for uh, storing data. So uh, we couldn't to do not pay back to community. That's why we pushed up here on GitHub. I still remember that night when we gathered with guys, we, uh, we had some beers and we, we did this git push and we started waiting for glory and growing community. Uh, next two years, it was two years ago, next two years, uh, we didn't sleep, we didn't eat because we were fixing issues and working with pull requests because it was crazy. And now I'm proud to say that we have the most start telecom project ever. I think you can do like this here. <laughs> okay, that's how we dreamed. <laughs> Reality is a bit different. <laughs> Reality is a bit different. So um, after two years, we have 36 stars. I think that 35 is from our friends and 36 is from my mom. <laughs> I, uh, and, uh, the, but the worst part that we had only one open issue and it was like a question and something like this. So without marketing, you can, I mean, open source nothing without marketing, but we truly wanted to make the project good. Uh, but we didn't uh, give up, as you understand. That's why I'm here now. Uh, we just took a break. We kept working on our main uh, projects and main uh, activities. And meanwhile, we were collecting information. What else? Uh, voice over IP providers, like different but mostly like big size providers want to have and want to, let's say, see in our type of products. And mm, collecting this information, we came to simple requirements number two. So release poor engineers make support team responsible for troubleshooting, release poor support team and make computers responsible for monitoring to prevent troubleshooting. So it's easy. Uh, what could we do? <laughs> Uh, we did SIP3. SIP3 is the next version of Tapir, and now it will be like uh, original. I, now it will be the name of brand and product uh, we are going to work and develop. So let me introduce you, uh, let me give you some technical details because I was explaining some stuff so far. Uh, this is uh, our architecture diagram, mm, pretty common for any monitoring platform. Absolutely. I mean, it's a typical thing. You just can, can change names and that's it. So Captain, kind of stomach, uh, it captures data, it, uh, mm, it's adapter. So it uh, encapsulates different protocols from, uh, I mean, network, like row protocols from Salta and sends information in internal protocol to Salta. Salta is a bit in heart. It's an engine, it's event-driven pipeline based on, okay, all our product made, uh, written in Java and Java-based uh, languages. For instance, now new version of SIP3 written uh, on Kotlin. Kotlin is the language from JetBrains, uh, guys behind IntelliJ IDEA. Um, so, Salta is pipeline and it's responsible for uh, retrieving data from different sources. You can see that we can grab data from third party sources like OpenSieve, FreeSwitch, Asterix, and Salta aggregates, correlates all call related information, partially correlates, not fully, and sends data like metrics to third party monitorings, to InfluxDB because we use InfluxDB, and to MongoDB. Tweak is our brain because we correlate information only partially because you can't correlate it like fully and you can correlate it. Not all, not all information comes in real time. Uh, that's why Tweak makes lots of work aggregating uh, another part of information. And Hoof is just a beautiful UI. Uh, that's it. Uh, I skipped database layer because I want to spend one more slide on it. For payload, we use MongoDB and we optimize it a lot. Mongo distributed and shared by itself so it actually has a very good performance, but to be able to handle uh, any amount of data, we do lots of tricks, I mean, kind of best practices. First of all, for SIP, we do a couple of levels of partitioning. Partition on partitioning level one, we uh, separate uh, information by SIP methods, like by SIP calls and SIP registers. Uh, on partitioning level two, we 
uh, separate data on call index because you don't need actually to index every message you have. For instance, if you have uh, 100 trying, why do you need to index it? Uh, or if you have at the same time, 100 trying has the same fields like from, to, whatever. <coughs> so that's why we have index cr created in, in originally from initial methods with some additional information from another methods. Uh, and also we have partitioning by time. Because without partitioning by time, you can't actually build a good monitoring system. So all these optimizations, they help us to uh, have search agent and such a nice feature like advanced search. It's a new one because, as I said, Tapir mm, was able to search only by number, like A number, B number, number and daytime. Here we, you see advanced search, new dashboard, where you can search by any uh, type of information you want. Uh, here it is, it's a real example from production. You can see that engineer, he looked in the beginning, he looked for SIP register and uh, state unauthorized. He found out that, okay, I see some anomalies. He put a color mask in SIP register and he found out that, okay, somebody is just uh, doing registrations every five milliseconds, uh, uh, just, you know, incrementing number. And then he just checked that, okay, uh, all these things comes from the same uh, source address. So it's a fraud detection. I mean, it's a real case of troubleshooting of fraud detection. I just changed numbers, of course. <laughs> uh, but to realize that you have some issues, that you have some anomalies on your network, especially when you have 20,000 SIP messages per second or 100,000 uh, unit metrics. You can't live without metrics and you can have only, for instance, average call duration or Okay, you can have even average call duration and ISR as metrics, but you need to have multiple dimensions. You need to have ability to see what are the average call duration or different metrics, um, let's say, for particular customer, for your um, interconnection partner, whatever. Because you can have a partial uh, disruptions on your service, and you need to know about this. So that's why uh, CIP3, um, correlate, uh, collects and correlates metrics by any dimension. So you can say, okay, I want to have it by uh, trunk. I want to have it by user agent. I want to have it by this or that. You can have it here. And um, here is a real example of our customer, company Telestacks. Uh, they are CPAS provider uh, who is working uh, on RESTCOM platform and they have um, they have installed RESTCOM platform on Amazon in three different regions, in US, in Japan, and in uh, Ireland. Um, and, you know, till the time they asked us uh, to provide them some metrics, some information about their service, they uh, already had uh, something like environment with requirements. For instance, they had infrastructure as a code project where with Ansible they deploy all these uh, services in cloud and uh, the things that they already had Datadoc as monitoring system. So what we did, we just provided them, par them part of SIP3 uh, integrated with Datadoc. Uh, how did we do? You see under SIP3, you can see this logo. It's a Java framework called uh, Micrometer and this is actually adapter for any like literally any, no, almost any, <laughs> almost any time series database you want to, uh, you, you can think of. For instance, this micrometer can send metrics to Datadog, to Prometheus, to InfluxDB, to Elasticsearch, to New Relic, whatever. Whatever you choose. Because let's say that uh, in our world now, um, integrations are like a new feature. I mean, you need to provide flexibility and in integrations. So, uh, now it's a demo time. Yeah, dangerous demo. <laughs> so the things that, uh, as you know, we started from, ah, okay, I need to do something to make it visible, right? Can anybody help me because I think it's a, a screen. Huh? Duplicate, uh, 
So I want to make this green. Okay. Nice. Okay. So uh, we started from GitHub project, as you know, and it had no um, it had no success. That's why now we want to build our community around demo project. So we have demo sip3.io. You can log in there. Okay. You can log in there, and you can actually try it by yourself. Okay, with artificial data, data for now, but we are going to implement uh, and put all our new features on the, under this project. So I think that to try is even better than to see it on GitHub, but GitHub version is coming too. So you see simple search is something that we think is good for support teams because it's something that uh, re replies on most of the customer's tickets. You have this advanced search. Okay. Okay, you have this advanced search where you can search by method, by anything you want, IP, address, list of hosts. Mm. So... <coughs> Uh, it's again the same thing. Uh, unfortunately, for demo, we did only one leg, but we will add more information, and you will see pretty much uh, the good picture with correlation of all legs and all methods. Uh, currently, it works only with SIP, no RTP and RTCP, uh, and also you can check out a technical dashboard. We just put it uh, as an example. You have ISR, average call duration, call attempts by different states, average call duration by direction, whatever. So it's just a showcases. We will add more showcases, and also we will add business dashboard, which will show you like different business metrics. Because um, when we realize that, OK, we have all information about network exchange, we can use it for business as well. We can show you some business insights, and this is great. Uh, now let me try to get back. You see some code. Uh, here is our roadmap. Uh, we are going to release GitHub version uh, soon. After that, we will be working on DPDK capturing because uh, now we are working on RTP and RTCP. And when we talk about 20,000 zip messages per second, it's insane amount of media. And lip pickup, actually we use originally wrappers over lip pickup, is not capable to deal with this thing. That's why we need to go on the low level and use DPDK. DPDK is toolkit for capturing information directly from uh, network card. I mean, from network card buffer without uh, routing to kernel. So after that, we are going to implement machine learning. We have metrics, we have different dimensions, and we can predict anomalies and actually uh, even now with InfluxDB and different uh, plugins for it, you can have something like time series anomal uh, metric analysis and everything. And we are going to introduce more of UI improvements. That's it for, I think, next maybe three, four months. Uh, and actually, that's it at all. Thank you. Thank you for... Any questions? questions? I can share this <laughs> this T-shirt for questions. <laughs> I have uh, okay, you, and then I have also some Actually, I have stickers also, <laughs> if you want, because I uh, it's my first presentation as a speaker, but ah, I okay. love pre I love conferences, and I I am a sticker addicted. Person, so. <laughs> okay. so I have a proprietary system and uh, we want to make some uh, monitoring and what what kind of uh, exports do you support? I mean, uh, 
what should I export to the system in order to have these stats? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Um. So um, they have like a proprietary system, or they consider using this one. What kind of exports they should do in order to use your tool? So they have a system that's proprietary. Do you have like a protocol, like I don't know, help or JSON or so that they can use to? Okay. Uh, first of all, we are capturing from network, but if you have a proprietary protocol, uh, okay, we can make an integration because we have our internal pro protocol, and in addition to this, we, okay, we can't, do not take advantage of open source, and we can use, uh, for SIP, at the moment, we can, you can send HEP v3. Yep, so in future, maybe it will be for RTP and RTCP as well, because guys did a great job uh, integrating with other platforms, so. We can, we can do not uh, take this advantage. Okay, so somehow related until we get there. Uh, is there any like a Docker image or virtual machine that someone okay. can just take and run and? Sure, uh, in a month, and as I said, we will release an open source version and it all will be with Docker. And also we are working on Ansible part where you can just deploy components, uh, whatever you need. I mean, because this system uh, has different components and you can deploy it with Ansible scripts or Puppet, Chief, whatever you need. The data ingestion is based on uh, pickup files, on pa packet captures, right? Now it's uh, live capturing uh, or yeah. pickup files, yes. What about encrypted traffic? Um, you can't decrypt it. Okay. So that's, that's the it's use case in enterprises. It's a good question, uh, but we have it only in our roadmap at the moment. Uh, because Maybe other, other data sources uh, you suggest? Uh, okay. Raw data of, of log files. The thing is that we are a small team and uh, we are working on, thank you for your question, we are working on uh, features based on our customers' requests. And okay, yes, when we will be big and fast growing, we will implement uh, SSL or if our customer will ask it, we will do it for him, right? And also, Mm. If we talk about different connections, there are a plenty of uh, choices. Because, for instance, we were thinking about integration with SSL and protocols because we, uh, some of our customers are close to mobile operators and we are good in camel and in diameter. So mm, if they will ask us, we will implement this as well. At the moment, we have roadmap, which I just showed you. And we are trying to move very fast and just to have new and new requirements from our customers, it's just like this. Um, I, have, I have one more question. Um, you're saying that you are using have three. Uh, is there on your roadmap to also support other kind of uh, uh, messages like besides SIP, like logs and stuff like that? and RTCP. I, I'm, I mean, you said are you are going to support RTCP. Yes, we are going to support RTCP. I was RTCP interested in logs RTCP. more because it's interesting. But you have Elasticsearch, why do you need us? I mean, we are more like, you know, experts in terms of uh, real-time communications, in terms of voice over IP. So the thing that all these metrics, uh, you need to know how to, ac what actually metrics you need to, how to, how to aggregate it, what to extract and wh where to put. And we want to be experts in this case. We don't want to, uh, you know, compete with Elasticsearch. It's not, I mean. Okay. So you Thank still you. can use Elasticsearch for your logs and you can use this thing for voice over IP I at the moment. I was thinking of attaching a context with a, a call. That's, that's why. Ah, okay. <laughs> Okay, we are a bit over. Maybe you 